Hey, Adam, guess what? What? The actual battle for the PC's heart and soul, okay. believe it or not, yep. is not between Intel and AMD. Everybody believes that. Oh, it's the, AMD and NVIDIA. No, it's actually the battle between Intel and Qualcomm. That oh. is, those are two giant companies duking it out for the heart and soul of the PC. The reason, of course, is we have Snap Dragon SOCs, the same ones that have been in phones and tablets for a long time, in PCs, running Windows. We do? We do, that's a big difference. It's the first time I think we've seen a big push in a long time for ARM on the PC, but to find out which is better, which is faster, we have two nearly identical tablets. Uh, they, they look pretty damn close to me. Yes, HP Envy X2, the only one that I can think of, where they're built on both Intel and ARM. Hmm, okay. On the right, Snapdragon 835 Adreno 540. On the left, well, my on your right internet is a <laughs> Core i5 KB Lake Y part, which is a low power uh, seventh generation KB Lake part, i5, so not super duper high clocks. Okay, well, why would you ever want to get the, the Snapdragon one? Well, they're both actually almost the same price. The Snapdragon today is 800 bucks with four gigs and 128 gigs. Note, this one is eight gigs and 256 gigs, the only configuration I could secure. Okay. And the Intel version, the uh, HP NVX2 has that uh, Core i5, uh, HD 615, four gig, 128, SATA SSD for 900 bucks. Okay. So 800 versus $900, both of them with keyboard. I think both of them with their pens, you can interchange the pens. But what I thought it would be great is we take both of these and we put them up against each other. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I I don't think I would ever want to buy the Snapdragon version, but maybe you can convince me otherwise. All right, yeah. So that's the interesting thing. So let's let's first benchmark on a run. I could not run a traditional Cinebench R15 that we're all used to because there was no 64-bit support on ARM. So I ran Cinebench uh, okay. R11 32-bit performance. The first slide you're seeing right now is multi-core performance and. Core i5, 7th Gen Y is uh, about 56% uh, faster than the uh, the Snapdragon part. Uh, this is uh, multi-core performance though, so you are looking at dual core with hyper-threading versus four big cores and four small cores on the big little thing on the ARM thing that they do. If you actually look into actual single core performance by Ooh. looking at Cinebench R1132 bit uh, single thread. That doesn't look good. That is really ugly. You're looking at 373% difference. Ooh. Yeah, that's a single thread. Uh, I mean, that's that's what I'm expecting. That's what you'd expect, <laughs> a lot of things. Uh, next test is Tablet Mark 2017. It is a free benchmark you can download in the Windows Store okay. built by Babco. Uh, made for testing tablets, cross-platform iOS, as well as ARM, uh, Android, and Windows. And you're looking about 200% faster on the Core i5 versus the Snapdragon 835. Oh. So, you know, I could run these benchmarks all day and just yeah. show you the Core i5 just pounding the Snapdragon 835 mercilessly all day. Folks, there is no Snapdragon 845 version. Sorry, that all we have is the 835 version, so it's not going to get that much better anyway. Okay. But I think I want to get into the reasons why, and the next slide sort of explains it. This is Geekbench 4.30. It actually contests the ARM uh, CPU in the in the uh, in the NVX2 in native ARM. Okay. That's native ARM instructions instead of x86 instructions. Because what Microsoft oh. and Qualcomm are doing is they're taking those instructions for Windows that are all meant for x86, and they're translating them in real time so that they run on ARM, which is a completely different architecture. Uh, as you can see, there's two purple bars. The short bar is what you sort of expect that to get when you're translating it, yep. you're adding the additional layer of, we've got to now convert all these instructions for x86. Long bar in Geekbench shows you your uh, nano support, which is actually very decent. Yeah. And I look at this, like this looks pretty good, but you do have to remember, of course, we are looking at four cores plus four little cores. They on ARM, on the Snapdragon part, versus a, a dual core KB Lake Y part with hyper threading. To look into just single core performance, it's not looking as good, but I gotta tell you, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Looking at that longer bar when you're running native ARM instructions, it's yeah, it's probably 
not as bad as well and, I, and maybe an atom part would be but <laughs> once you get down to adding the layer of translation you're just you're taking a pretty big hit and two blue bars for intel one is 64 bit one is 32 bit just for comparison because we are running 32 bit windows on the arm part so it just explains a lot of that is just sort of lost in the translation layer future mark night raid 1.0 fairly a new benchmark it actually has native support for arm both <laughs> the SOC for the graphics part and the CPU. Okay. And looking at the overall performance, it's not that bad. And then we dive down into the Adreno 540 versus the HD 615 and gosh, mm. what is that? 68%. So of course we are looking at integrated graphics. So yeah, not of, the, of them are great, but uh, H Intel into integrated graphics can hold its head up high. Yeah. But this again, this is native. These are native instructions. This is not dealing with that translation layer. So I got to say, they're a lot closer than I expected. Uh, CPU actually, the Whoa. Intel part is slower. Whoa. Um, I'm gonna guess this is because you're looking at na again native performance uh, okay, from Future Mark from Night Raid, and you are getting also probably eight cores, eight real cores. Some of them small, some of them big, versus a dual core with hyperthreading. Hmm. So, but that's not that bad. I mean, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be when you get to some native instructions. Yeah, but still, I mean, what's the reason to get the, uh, the Snapdragon version? Because that's, well, that's still not convincing. The next one explains it. It is battery life. I played the exact same video. 4K mm -hmm. video run and test is one we run all the time. We loop it. Uh, we set the, the brightness for the same, about 250 to 260 nits. And then we run earbuds, airplane mode, run it till it dies. And you're looking at very decent life from the Intel part, more than 10 hours. That's enough for me, frankly. But if you really want stupidly long battery life, that Snapdragon 835, look at you looking at more than 16 hours of runtime. That's pretty good. That's video. But I got to say one thing that as I, I love benchmarks, I love running them to measure things. One issue I've heard is in real life, mm -hmm. you know what? It's not that bad, it's not that bad. I've heard from analysts that I've used these things running Office and you know, I'm pretty happy with it. So one of the things we're gonna do right now, which is gonna be a little different, is we are gonna run both of these devices with the same keyboard and mouse. Nice. I have a Huntech Sync Master provided by the developer in Korea. It's an awesome thing, lets you run a single mouse, single keyboard to multiple devices. Mm -hmm. These two things think they have a mouse and keyboard. As nice. you can see, I'm clicking on this, get so, the same thing. And uh, I've got my uh, my trusty camera here that I'm gonna film uh, Gordon going through some uh, some of these steps here. So. Right, I'm gonna start with just media heavy websites. Sorry, no partisan politics. I will do Fox News and I will do CNN so nobody can shout at us. And this is running in Edge. This is running in Edge. These are both the exact same version of Windows. And the reason I like to use media heavy websites is they love to throw video and flash. Let's let's keep adding them. Uh, Control T, I think. Let's do uh, PC World, right? That's a good one. Oh I love yeah, that PC site. World it's a Good site. You should you go should, there. You should check it out. Yeah. We are not running any ad blockers. And then. I am going to run. Oh, so I just did a control tab. You can see how long it takes. To, one on the right, eight gigs. One on the left, four gigs. I couldn't get four gig versions. Let's do uh, Macworld. Macworld.com, our sister I don't site. like the products. I like the people who work there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do that. Let's do another uh, control T. See how long it takes. A new one. Where's a good place to go? Uh, let's go abcnews.com. And I am picking media websites because as you know, folks, oh my God, we love to throw you those ads and those videos. Let's do another one, cbsnews.com. It's a little cache here. I did also clear the cache on both of these beforehand, wiped everything out. And here is the ultimate tester. I don't know if you know this, sfgate.com. It's the San Francisco Chronicles <laughs> website. This website will break anything. Whenever you wanna, when we complain about how slow our website is, we just say, thank God it's not the Chronicle. So what's interesting, check this out now. Where's my Intel part? Where's my Intel oh, part? It's, it's lagging. Yeah. The Snapdragon So yeah, as you is, can see, the Snapdragon yeah, is. It's already loaded the video. Some of this, of course, I guess people can say, well, you got four gigs for Intel, you got eight gigs on that one. I'm not convinced it is necessarily a memory thing. I think actually some of that is because you're getting sort of eight cores, you know, maybe there's some efficiency going on. But look, I'm still loading this video. Yeah, it's taking a while. 
right? Oh, there it is. So let's go, and I'm going to go here. Let's see if I can get the scroll to work. Let's scroll down. One of the issues you can see is the ads are different. For people who use browsing tests and rely on browsing tests, every website you go to, if you're using live websites, you get different ads. So, and it is still, what is going on here? Now we're just gonna switch around, good old PC world, look at that. PCworld.com. Watch this, I'm gonna switch tabs. Uh, I gotta tell you, that's the Snapdragon is, is doing better. What, yes. What the hell? This is a, the shocker to me, is I ran this and I said, whoa, what is going on? Why is this? Yeah, I would much rather want the Snapdragon version here. Right, so what is going on here? Is it memory? I don't know. I, uh, I don't really think it's memory. I don't think this is four gigs worth of websites. This is running 64-bit windows. This is running 32-bit windows. So mm -hmm. Microsoft has, of course, done a ton of work to tune Edge mm -hmm. to work great on Snapdragon, on ARM. They've done that a lot. The thing is, do you use Edge? <laughs> no. no, I don't use Edge either. I've tried to. It's really hard to. I have a lot of issues with it. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. We've heard from Mark Hockman that it's uh, it's, it's fine. It's fully featured, but but what uh, happens if you go to Chrome? All right, let's, let's, let's check it out on Chrome. I... I mean, all right, it's loading a little quicker on the left. Okay, the Intel part. Do the same thing we did last time. So Chrome is non-native to Snapdragon and still running x86 instructions. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's... I'm gonna leave, in fact, I'm gonna give it more time to load up some of the ads. I think the Snapdragon part is still working. Wow, okay. So the tables have flipped. Tables have flipped and actually the thing is, well I gotta say an edge, I was surprised Snapdragon with a lot of optimization does pretty well. Yeah. It does pretty well. Uh, and the Core i5, though, is not that far behind. Uh, again, nonpartisan news. We have CNN. We have Fox News loaded. Don't yell at us, folks. But look, um, once you get to that, you're still looking at a pretty big difference. So let's do another one. Is it still loading? I don't uh, even I know where the ads loading. are. I think it's actually still loading. Yeah. We have four gigs. Uh, four gigs on the left, eight gigs on the right. Can't be helped. Let's do, what else did I do? I uh, did ABC News. Mm-hmm. Wow. Huh. Oh my, how the tables have turned. Yes, but the thing is that's worse is it's so bad in Chrome. You know, it's, I gotta say, it's almost a deal breaker. Uh, and then let's do another one. Uh, we did cbsnews.com. SFGate. Oh, we don't want, that's the last one. That is oh, always okay. the icing on the cake. <laughs> the lead coated icing. Look, we've already got the ad on the left. I don't even know what is going on on the right. What the hell? And it's, there's, both of these folks are on the same Wi-Fi network. It is just simply, you saw the performance just a few seconds ago in Edge. Snapdragon was just as fast. If not, it was actually slightly better than the experience on this Core i5 wide part. Jeez. Yeah. Now let's do, I think, uh, oh, PC World. Yeah, PC World, Mac World. Those guys love ads. They sure do. <laughs> right? This is, uh, this is comical. Yeah. So uh, if we were hitting a memory problem before, we should be hitting it now. And the Intel part should be slower than the ARM part, which has eight gigs of RAM, but I'm not seeing that. Yeah. I don't even know where the ad is. Where's the ad? There should be more ads. It's still loading. It's still loading. Huh. Should I keep going? Uh, yeah, Macworld. Man. Yeah, and there's ads. And, of course, this is always the kick right in your private parts. SFGate.com. <laughs> I have friends that work there, but, oh, my God. Yeah. I can barely browse this on an overclocked Coffee Lake part. Huh? No, I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> it is actually very slow on, on desktops. If you go to sfgate.com, 
you want to look at your performance. And look, we are just, look, so I, again, I don't think it was necessarily we were hitting memory early. I really think it was just simply Edge has just been fine-tuned by Microsoft to run really, really well on ARM. All right, so once again, Gordon, I have to ask, why would you get the Snapdragon version? To be honest, I can't recommend anyone at the moment buying a Snapdragon-based device, especially when you're looking at uh, $800 versus $900, 4 gig, 128, both exact same memory, the exact same amount of storage. It's really hard to say, I recommend that you go out and buy a Snapdragon-based Windows device, mm -hmm. right? It just it just doesn't make any sense. If this were maybe half the cost or a lot cheaper, then yeah. But I mean, really, this is just, it's just for a normal person who doesn't care about great battery life, would you sacrifice all the performance you're giving up? <sighs> and, and to be fair, again, you're getting really decent performance out of Snapdragon if it's all optimized. If mm -hmm. you stay in that, it's really looking that little bubble or that little bubble, but you go outside of it, you go to Chrome, you go to the, every single app you're gonna go to, it's it's just gonna be ugly. Yeah. I think it's a combination of they need optimization to come, which takes forever, we all know this. Yeah. Software developers don't move really quickly, but it'll get to the point where it's enough, mm. I think. And then you sort of get the great battery runtime. It might be a really good part, laptop, tablet, CPU in a year, Today, hmm. it's hard to see it, right? It's just, and I gotta say, if you want ARM and you you gotta have that great battery life, then you may wanna look at an Apple product because Apple, what app, Apple is able to do, I know this is crazy hearing this from me, but Apple is able to enforce, we only want great things on our tablets, mm -hmm. our OS. If you don't work right, if you're not, you go fix this or we're not gonna let you win. Hmm. They can do that, Microsoft can't do that because Windows, the PC is an open, it's open, open. Yeah. you can't keep people out just because they suck or they're slow or whatever. They're, we allow everybody, they don't allow it. Intel needs to really take this as a serious threat. Qualcomm, and I gotta say, and this, is, this is why there is a battle. Qualcomm's not stopping. This is the same SOC that's in my phone that I got a year and a half ago. Yeah, right? right. Next one, next one, next one, next thing you know, who knows? So well, I, I'm interested to see if anybody out there has been running uh, Snapdragon on on Windows. Let let us know. Is, is it working for you? Are you are you upset you, you didn't get a, a Core i part? Because uh, yeah, as of right now, it's not looking too good. So no. Thanks for for doing this comparison. It's it's pretty in depth, but I think kind of eye opening, huh? <laughs> it is eye opening, and I got I got to say, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Like you saw an edge. Before your eyes, it was running faster than that Intel Core i5, Kitty yeah. Lake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So there is promise there. There is promise there. It's going to be a big rock to push up that mountain, mm -hmm. but, you know. Okay, cool. Well, thanks again, Gordon. We'll see you later.